New areas to watch for development deep into the tropics, even off the southeast coast and back into the Gulf. Plus, some of us are cooling down while others are warming up drastically. Severe weather returns to the picture and we are in day four of solar storm conditions. What is going on upstairs? I'm gonna break all of that down in today's forecast, starting right here with the tropical update. Hello there, my friends, and welcome into the channel. My name is Jason, and I'm so glad that you are here to track the weather with me on this Thursday, October the 2nd. If you're new to the channel, we track the entire spectrum of weather here, folks. So join the team. You'll be glad you did. Hit the subscribe button down below, ring the bell for notifications, leave a like, and certainly drop a comment in the comment section if you have a question or a comment, or if you most importantly have a prayer request, something that we can lift you up around. Please put it down there. Weather's important, but you're more important to me than that and that's the kind of community that we want to build here on this channel folks we're going to start here in the tropics and you can see Amelda right here sticking out like a sore thumb moving at warp factor three really east northeast I should have drawn the arrow up that way a little bit but it's going out here to its demise in the North Atlantic there's Bermuda you saw some rough weather as this moved over you last night and uh, things are clearing out as we see substance on the, along the backside here's a tropical wave out in the central Atlantic a lot of convection in our ITCZ zone in the MDR. Here is a big tropical wave moving off the coast of Africa. It's going to get into this zone and conditions are becoming more favorable for development. So we're going to watch that as we get on out in toward the next uh, several days, folks. A little blow up of convection over here off the southeast coast as well. What's that about? Well, we're going to watch that area too because we could see a little bit of development here and there's another little piece of energy in the Gulf. Looks pretty paltry right now, but uh, certainly something to keep our eyes on. Boy, the lesser and greater Antilles here, you guys are looking good after some rough weather earlier in the week. And there's a wave around uh, Colombia and certainly here in the Eastern Pacific as activity has been there all summer long. That is a lot to watch out here in the tropics. Here's the NHC homepage. And there's that 20% chance of formation. I've got all this text crawling across the bottom of the screen so you can read it there. And then there's another little wave here with only a 10% chance of development. But either way, whether it develops or not, it will bring rain into Florida and then into the southeast as well. We've got a big high pressure up here in and around New England and flow between that high and Amel is just cranking in the easterly winds. And we're going to see plenty of moisture working into the southeast. I'm going to just skip ahead and show you some ensemble members folks this is the european ensemble member map it's run out to day 10 already so this puts us out uh oh the 12th of october or so and you can see that several members are picking up on that wave that's coming off the coast of africa most of them take it eventually to the north but a few get it in here to the northern islands so certainly something to watch and then coming onto your screen is another area. Uh, we got the wave train just rolling off of Africa and we're going to see that continue. And a couple of those members kind of develop something here around that wave that's sitting off the coast of Florida, but not a lot of enthusiasm about it. So we're not looking at anything major here as the way it looks now, but certainly could see an enhancement of rainfall there into the Southeast. Now, this is the Google DeepMind. We'll get on a better display so we can see that. And it shows a mail to go. I've run a GIF here. This runs us out through day uh, 10 uh, uh, as well. So look, there it is. Several members picking up just like the European Ensemble did, but it scatters them out as you expect. It's always sort of happens when we get out toward 10 days. There's no consensus around the modeling in terms of where a system will go because they all see the atmosphere a little bit differently. And so that's why you get such a big spread here. So you get a kind of a big spread coming into the Caribbean, but we'll need to pay attention to this wave because it could develop and it does show a little bit more enthusiasm than the European model did for something here off the coast of Florida, working into Florida, maybe even a couple of members take it up into uh, North Carolina, but these would not be strong hurricanes or anything like that. There's just not enough time as it works along the coast here, folks. But uh, in any event, we are seeing a signal out here in the MDR, the main development region for a tropical system to potentially develop as we move on out toward the end of next week. And I've told you several times about the Atlantic becoming more favorable. We're in a La Nina. We're seeing uh, more favorable conditions return out here in terms of rising versus sinking motion. Orange is sinking, green is rising. And look what happens as we get on out here toward October the 6th and the 7th, 8th and the 9th. Greens across the board out here in the Atlantic. Green is go and go for tropical development is what we have, assuming wind shear and other factors cooperate. Got warm waters in the MDR, and especially as we get toward the Western Atlantic. So plenty to watch. Tropical season isn't going anywhere anytime soon. That's it for your tropical update. We're gonna take a look at the end of week forecast into the weekend, see what 
that has in store is severe weather returns to the forecast for some of us. But we've got your weather IQ question coming up right now, so don't go anywhere. Well, we've done snow and rain. What's next? Fog, of course, is next. And that is the question today. Which U.S. city is considered the foggiest city? Here are your choices. Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Barnstable, Massachusetts, or Point Reyes, California? If you know the answer, type it in the comment section. If you don't, just hang out till the end of the show and I'll let you know what the answer is then. Right now though, I've got to let you know what the forecast looks like for the next couple of days and on into the weekend. Just a programming note, the government shutdown has not shut down the GOES-19 satellite, which is great news because now we can see where it's cloudy. And we can see that it is cloudy from the Great Lakes back through the mid-Mississippi Valley, even some low clouds banked up against the eastern slopes of the southern Alps where cold rain lives. And I can see those clouds out my window this morning. Line of showers dissipating as they move through central Kansas and Oklahoma at this hour, and a big ocean storm sitting off the coast of Washington State, spinning out there just bringing in a long southwesterly fetch of moisture in from northern California up to Missoula, Montana, where we're seeing some rain and scattered showers through the northwest, little pockets of energy moving in the mid-level flow or enhancing that, of course. And I want to show you the alerts map because we've got a couple things to show here. Frost advisories and freeze warnings are in effect for parts of the New England area. Why is that? I'm going to show you on the temperature map here in a minute. Air quality problems down in Texas and a couple of flash flood watches up in central Idaho where we could see some rain this afternoon and heavy rain at that. Dallas, Houston, and Austin and surrounding areas, not great in the air quality department. Neither is southwestern and central Oregon here south of Salem and some smoke creeping back into the pitch picture here in central Washington state. So if you have sensitivity to those things, keep that in mind. This is the mid-level flow map here at 500 millibars, about three and a half miles up. And look at this. You can really, really, really start to see uh, all of uh, these bright colors here. This is really where the jet stream kind of is in the atmosphere. And another interesting feature is this big high pressure ridge here off uh, into the Four Corners region. And clockwise flow around that is doing one thing that's really important it is shutting down the gulf so we're not seeing any moisture surging out of the gulf why is that important well because we've got this big trough working in to the west coast as we get on into tomorrow afternoon it starts to close off into a low pressure look at this wind big wind coming in in the mid levels here and uh, these lines diverge here that's divergence and that helps to pull that to the air up and, and you'll see uh, in pockets of divergence you're going to usually see clouds and precipitation and if we had a bunch of moisture coming in out of the gulf over the central plains the next couple of days as this system moves on in you would see a big severe weather outbreak fortunately that's not going to happen we are going to see severe weather in western colorado and uh, western wyoming uh, over the next couple of days, particularly tomorrow evening, and then that threat will shift into the Dakotas as we get on into Saturday as this wind energy moves up in that direction. But fortunately, it's going to be sort of a scattered severe thunderstorm uh, event and not a big widespread event with big tornadoes and lots and lots and lots of wind damage and that kind of thing. So this afternoon, we're looking at showers from Northern California up into Montana and then across Florida with a big easterly fetch coming across there, southeast coast of the U.S. and the southern, basically coastal sections of the southern states here, you'll see rain as well. As we get on into tomorrow afternoon and evening, you'll, we're going to watch for thunderstorms to break out across western Colorado. Some of those are going to be supercells with large hail damaging winds. And then as we get on in towards Saturday, we'll see rain to start the day in parts of the upper plains and northern Rockies around the Bighorns. But look what happens Saturday afternoon. A low pressure starts to develop and help to organize the severe threat. So we may see a few line segments with wind and hail damage, some supercells as well. Wouldn't even rule out a tornado or two, but thank goodness we don't have a big moisture feed out of the Gulf. And then of course, we'll continue to see rain with those tropical pieces of energy and that tropical flow here across Florida into the Southeast. Eventually, some of that rain will make its way into the interior sections of the Southeast as we go on into next week. And then a new front pushes through as we get to the middle and end of the week with high pressure returning back in behind that, keeping us drier than normal up here in the northeast and as we look at rainfall over the course of the entire weekend dry as a bone mostly from 
Maine all the way back into Arizona, so it should be a nice weekend for your weekend plans if you've got any outdoor activities. The heaviest rainfall will be up here in northwest sections of Washington State, and then from central California through Nevada, southern Montana, northern Wyoming, through the Dakotas, and up into northwest Minnesota, where as much as an inch or so, two of rain could fall in some of those spots. And of course, along the Gulf Coast states, Florida and the east coast of Florida, picking up the bulk of the rain there with an inch or two down there, too. Temperatures, folks, in the temperature department, Warm weather is the story, and I'm going to back it up here and get on our maximum temperature map, but warm weather is the story through the nation's midsection with 80s making their way well up into Canada, 90s across the south where it's a little bit humid down here in Florida and the Gulf Coast states, but a big high pressure sitting up here pumping in drier and cooler air down the slopes of the apps on the east side looking at temperatures in the 70s in the southeast for highs, 50s up to the north, 60s in the northwest with clouds and rain up there. Tomorrow, 90s push a little farther to the north. It gets warmer in the north. It gets warmer along the east coast. We're still seeing temperatures in the 60s and 70s, but they warm up continually as we go through the next couple of days into Saturday and Sunday, and then 60s and 70s out west, and things will eventually kind of warm up on the west coast and cool off that front beginning to push through as we get on in toward next week. Now, if we take a look here at minimum temperatures, just to give you an idea, there's where the frost advisories and freeze warnings are coming from folks, 20s and 30s for overnight lows tonight up here in New England and then cool out west warm in the center portion of the country cool and dry down the east coast as we look at uh, Saturday morning temps so it's going to feel nice and crisp in parts of uh, the northeast down to the upper southeast and cooler air working into the Pacific Northwest and out into the western third of the country as a uh, front starts to work through and push those cool temperatures down toward the south and east and we get cool flow out of Canada by the time Monday morning rolls around we're looking at widespread 20s up here in portions of the northern Rockies and northern plains so things are cooling off out west be warming up a little bit toward the east and that is what is happening over the next several days folks 6 to 10 day looking at October the 7th through the 11th warmer than normal across much of the country with the only near normal signal out here in the Intermountain West up into the northern Rockies and northern plains above normal well above in Alaska well above in Hawaii it's hard to find below normal temperatures here in this October folks above normal precipitation in Alaska and Hawaii and in the desert southwest up toward the Great Lakes through the same period near to below from New England down into the lower Mississippi Valley and along the west coast as well after that system pushes finally on shore and that is your forecast folks we're going to wrap things up here with a look at that solar storm and the answer to today's IQ question. This is the solar storm that just keeps going and going and going and we still find ourselves in geomagnetic storm conditions after day four. We even got up to strong geomagnetic storm conditions as the KP went to 6.67. It has backed off since then, but uh, look at this. This is the sun, the disk, of course. This big bright spot right on its nose facing us is a big sunspot. These sunspots have not really changed a whole lot in the last 24 hours, but they are of the size and complexity that they could release a big solar flare. We've only seen M-class solar flares. X is the next class, and we could certainly see that, but we haven't seen any CMEs, just some solar wind, presumably from this coronal hole that has moved around. And now we have another coronal hole. It kind of looks like a face here or a mouth, but that is on the bottom portion of the sun, so we probably would just get a glancing blow from that. But our magnetic field must be rather weak because we don't have massive solar wind, and we certainly don't have a lot in the way of density. The Enlil shows the solar wind. You can see we've gone through some here in the green. Got some yellow approaching and will be impacting us over the course of today and uh, potentially that solar wind stream coming out of the southern portion of that uh, coronal hole will miss us off to the south but we we may get a glancing blow from that little green dot's earth and so as long as that solar wind's coming as we certainly have the chance to be in solar storm conditions and will probably remain that way here is the aurora forecast see a pretty good chance of aurora and the, if we if we get one the view line will be down here towards southern minnesota across central washington and back up into northern maine so if you're in those areas you may be able to see it if the solar storm is stronger than forecast which it kind of has been over the last couple of days then 
this uh, would potentially expand farther south. So if it's clear, keep an eye to the north, you might get lucky, capture a picture of those northern lights. Meantime, the moon is 75% brightness now, waxing gibbous, moving up to a full harvest moon on October the 6th. That is coming right around the corner. And so is Halloween, only 28 days and change from Halloween. And that's the show for today, folks. Now I've got to get you the answer to the IQ question the foggiest city in the U.S. Which city is that? Portland, Seattle, Barnstable, or Point Reyes? And the answer is Point Reyes, California, with up to 200 foggy days per year. That's a lot of fog, folks. It's the marine layer. So you've got a warm marine layer coming off of the Pacific, and that helps to create conditions for fog across much of Northern California, but particularly this particular city called Point Reyes. And that's it, folks. And by the way, Barnstable, Massachusetts, is part of a community that makes up Cape Cod. Cape Cod is not a city, as you made it, uh, as you may know. It's made up of 15 towns, such as uh, Barnstable, Falmouth, and Chatham, and a province town, many villages within those towns. And uh, the Barnstable is the largest town on the Cape, by the way. And also on this day, thought this was interesting too. The debut of Charles M. Schultz Peanuts comic strip made, uh, I said this backwards, so now I have to use the word debut again, made its debut in newspapers, folks. It was um, in seven, it was published in seven newspapers on October the 2nd in 1950. It's a fun time of year when you start to get to watch the great pumpkin Charlie Brown and a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving and a Charlie Brown Christmas. Those are some great shows. If you haven't seen those, then make sure you watch those this fall and winter season, folks. And that is it for the show. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned a couple of things. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of Cold Rain's Weather World as we wrap up the work week. As always, this is Cold Rain reminding you the weather runs 24-7, but I got you covered right here, right now on Cold Rain's Weather World 4814. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.